Hi, it's Sanjay Mukhopadhyay and today we'll be talking about the pathology of toxoplasmosis. And before I show you pictures, and I've got lots of them, um, I'll have to do the mandatory um, life cycle, which is uh, necessary for any parasitic organism. So I'm going to start uh, with a picture of the culprit here, or the most commonly blamed culprit, which is this cute little kitty. So this cute little kitty, when she poops, and if she's infected with um, toxoplasmosis, will pass these little oocysts or unspirulated oocysts, or in simple English, just eggs. Um, so the infected cat or kitten passes these eggs in their feces. And if somebody comes into contact with them, uh, by improper handling of food and so forth, or if the cat feces somehow contaminates vegetables and that um, uh, somebody comes in contact with that, that's how somebody might get infected with toxoplasmosis. So let us um, imagine that this uh, lady has a cat and she gets in contact with the cat feces. So eventually these oocysts that are present in the cat feces might make her make their way to the um, the lady's digestive system, get into her bloodstream, and then they um, tra they transition into this form known as a tachyzoite. And a tachyzoite is a little crescentic or banana-shaped form with a little nucleus in it. Tachy means fast and zoite means animal. This is the fast animal. This is the one that infects all these organs. And the three organs that you really have to be concerned about when you um, are muscles, eyes, and brain. And typically the patient is somebody who is uh, severely immunosuppressed. So somebody with HIV AIDS would be the, um, the typical person to get infected with these tachyzoites. And then the next thing that happens is once the tachyzoid gets into tissue, it insists. So there's a cyst around all these um, forms that are now called bradyzoites. Bra-D and the zoite is spelled the same way. So bradyzoite. And that's pretty much what you find in the organs, in the tissues that are infected. Actually, I'll show you some pictures later on of the heart muscle, which is also infected with um, bradyzoites of to toxoplasma. So remember, you get toxoplasmosis from cats. And that's that's at least the stereotypic way to, to get it. And then um, um, the oocysts turn into tachyzoites. The tachyzoites infect the tissues and the bradyzoites are the slow animals, bradyzoites. Slow animals um, are the insistent uh, dormant form that are f that are found um, uh, in tissues. So the pictures I've taken here are almost exclusively, I think almost all of them are from Twitter. So one thing I wanted to do is try and demonstrate how many beautiful educational pictures are posted publicly on Twitter for people to use for educational purposes. And I haven't asked for permission, but these are publicly posted pictures and I'm um, uh, acknowledging or citing the people who posted them. So this Beautiful picture was posted by someone named Vicky Jeffers, and uh, that's her Twitter handle next next to the um, next to her name. And what she has posted is basically the uh, a picture of a Brady zoite in an in a cell. So let me just change this to my handy laser pointer. So this cyst here is the Brady zoite. That's the insisted form, and you see. Uh, I'm sorry, that's the cyst. And these little guys inside them are the bradyzoids. So this is how the, the um, organism will basically sit inside the infected cell, in the infected tissue, in your brain, in your heart, in your eyes, causing lots of symptoms. This is the host cell nucleus and this is the uh, cytoplasm. Beautiful, beautiful uh, picture just to show how they how they um, sit there in the tissue. Here's a picture by a um, um, Twitter handle named I am Memorandum and the name is Internal Medicine. I don't know who this is, but they posted a beautiful um, uh, picture of the CT scan of toxoplasmosis. And typically you get a ring enhancing lesion in the brain. So this is a CT scan of the brain. It's cut sideways. 
so you're looking at the brain from one side, you know, from the left or right. And, and what you're basically seeing is this um, ring-like lesion where the periphery uh, is enhancing. And enhancing means you give contrast to the patient in their, um, you know, intravenously. And then um, enhancement means that that's the area that takes up the contrast. So it turns white. It looks white on the, on the CT scan. And the rest of it is black. So the, this is classically a ring enhancing lesion. And also another classic thing about toxoplasmosis is there are typically multiple ring enhancing lesions. So there's one here that might be the same one. This is a, a, a different one. So there are multiple lesions in the same patient. And this account also posted a beautiful list of uh, 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 differential diagnosis of patients with HIV um, that if they get ring enhancing lesions in their brain, what, what should you think about? So it's not just toxoplasmosis. Other things can give this appearance too, including lymphoma, abscess, tuberculosis, fungal infection, and metastatic tumor. So this is by no means pathognomonic of uh, uh, toxoplasmosis, but that is what should make you think of toxoplasmosis. Now, this is, is another spectacular um, uh, CT scan image by Dr. Yale Rosen. Now, Dr. Rosen um, uh, is a pathologist that's actually very well known to me um, and is a well-known lung pathologist. In October 2017, Dr. Uh, Dr. Rosen actually drove 500 miles from New York City to Cleveland to hand over his life's collection of Kodachrome slides, pathology slides to me. There were 16,000 Kodachrome slides, and, and that collection includes gross and microscopic pictures from many organs, mostly the lung, from 1956 to 2004. And as you can see here, it also includes radiologic images. There are even some electron microscopic images. So there, it's a beautiful, beautiful collection. And I've decided to uh, use it to the best of my ability for educational purposes. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm posting one of the images that are from the Yale Rosen slide collection. And uh, you can see again a, a ring enhancing lesion uh, marked by the by the uh, red arrow. And again, you can see there are multiple lesions in the brain. Typically, you get these lesions at the gray white junction uh, or in the deep uh, gray matter nuclei. And this is another picture from Dr. Yale Rosen. This is a gross image and the, the organ you are seeing here is cerebellum. The cerebellum is, is actually not the most common site in, uh, to be infected by toxoplasma, but it is in this case. And you can see again, the lesion here looks sort of hemorrhagic to my eye. Perhaps it's necrotic and it's um, involving um, these parts of the cerebellum. This is another beautiful gross picture from the, from the slide collection um, of cerebellar toxoplasmosis. This is a picture that's actually from my own collection. And that shows a, uh, a spectacular bradyzoid that's the white arrow within the brain parenchyma um, uh, i think the um, initial impression was um, immune reactivation syndrome and the patient i think um, eventually did end up um, being diagnosed with hiv aids um, and the red arrow shows you a plasma cell you can see how many plasma cells are present in the inflammatory infiltrate in the brain behind this lesion so the white lesion is a toxoplasmosis cyst filled with uh, with bradyzoites. I'm sorry if I've been calling these things bradyzoites in the past. These are actually cysts filled with bradyzoites. And then I'm showing you more images posted by people on Twitter, uh, just again to highlight how many, uh, you know, umpteen uh, educational images of various disease processes are posted on Twitter. All I did is I just went into Twitter and searched for toxoplasmosis and all these images and tweets popped up. I haven't posted the tweets, but just uh, individual images. So this one was posted by Sandro Casavilca. I'm sorry if I'm butchering the pronunciation. And you can see the Twitter handle there, another cyst with bradyzoites. This is um, a pathologist named Andrew Gao um, uh, posted a beautiful image of tachyzoites. And you can see next to the red arrow and the arrow that Andrew um, attached to this image that there are three small um, uh, tachyzoites that you can see on the H&E stained section. When they bunch up, of course, that into a cyst, those are bradyzoites, but you don't see that here. This is an example of an immunohistochemical stain for taxoplasma, which can help to confirm the diagnosis. I've used this in the past, and 
I found it to be very useful uh, to, to bring out the organisms. Actually, you can see off to the side here, there are some free uh, tachyzoites that are uh, staining with this immunohistochemical stain. And um, also posted by Dr. Gao is this um, uh, cyst with bradyzoites uh, also marking with the uh, um, immunohistochemical antibody to toxoplasma. So um, it might be hard to see sometimes on h &E, but but um, the immunohistochemistry can be pretty helpful to pick these organisms up in low burden cases. Um, Valerie Fitzhugh is actually a, a friend of mine or a Twitter friend of mine, and we have worked together on, um, on projects before, and she's very active on Twitter. I would encourage you to give her a follow and all the people who have posted these wonderful images out of their own generosity, please follow them on Twitter. Um, and encourage them because they're doing great, uh, great work by posting these images. And she's posted um, a lovely image of a um, cyst um, with toxoplasma bradyzoites. Dr. Melissa Blessing, I believe, is at Mayo Clinic um, and her handle is Dr. MMB, posted um, an, uh, a lovely image of tachyzoites of toxoplasmosis here. Um, the actual tweet also had the H&E stained uh, image, but uh, but the highlight of the tweet was actually this smear, and the point she wanted to make was that the smear can be diagnostic if you see these crescent-shaped uh, tachyzoids of toxoplasmosis. Uh, you can see the crescent or banana shape and the little nucleus up there that is diagnostic. And this was posted by Dr. Marianne Bainon. I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing it right. Uh, at Bainon MD. Uh, again, this is a cyst with toxoplasma brady. And now I'll switch to another um, set of pictures. There's two pictures with beautiful examples of toxoplasmosis cysts within um, muscle tissue. And so this one was posted by Path Geek, and, and, and you can see how these little um, organisms look uh, different than the normal uh, nucleus of the, of the, I'm sorry, uh, the, how these organisms look different from the nucleus of the, um, um, of the muscle tissue. Another spectacular example was posted by Dr. Sylvain Trahan. I believe he was a fellow at Mayo Clinic uh, sometime in the past, sometime around when I did my fellowship there. And he has posted um, another um, quite gorgeous example of a toxoplasmosis cyst uh, in the myocardium. So this is in the heart. And you can see um, all these, you know, hundreds and hundreds of bradyzoids within this large cyst that's distorting the muscle fibers. So I hope um, that this has made an impression on you and left you with a mental picture of what toxoplasmosis looks like. Thank you for watching and listening.